Well, hello everybody and welcome again to another OpenShift Commons briefing. This time we have Avi Networks is a shesha or a shisha. Um, and um, they're new members to the OpenShift Commons and I ran into them at KubeCon a while back and they had uh, a different approach to some of the ap application network services um, and working with OpenShift. So I thought it would be a good way to introduce them to the community by having them come on and talk a little bit about what they're doing. Um, and I'm not gonna do too much more of an intro because I'm pretty new to it. So Ashish, if you could introduce yourself and your colleague who's gonna be doing the demos, um, we'll get started and there'll be Q and A um, in the chat. And after the demonstrations is done, um, there'll be time to ask questions again too. So please take it away. Thank you, Diane. Um, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to present at the OpenShift Commons uh, webinar. My name is Ashish Shah. Uh, I'm a Senior Director of Product Management at Avi Networks. With me is my colleague, uh, Bhushan Pai, who is a Senior Solutions Architect, um, and he will be driving the demo about halfway through the presentation. Uh, We'll do, uh, in terms of the agenda today, we'll do a brief introduction to Avi Networks, including the product architecture, and then we will deep dive into how Avi solution works with OpenShift. Um, we'll do a, a deep technical dive there, and then we'll do a, a, a live demo where we will show you how Avi works in OpenShift environment from beginning to the end, and what are all the services it provides. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask on the chat window, and then we will address them as we go, as well as uh, towards the end. Uh, so let's start with a brief introduction to Avi Networks. Um, Avi Networks is about four and a half, five years old company based, uh, headquartered in Santa Clara, California, uh, but with offices worldwide, including um, the continental US, uh, Europe, including UK, mainland Europe, Germany, France, and the Netherlands. Uh, and uh, in Asia, including India and Southeast Asia. And so we have a uh, global footprint, both R&D and customer uh, engineering. As a company, what we do is software-defined application services, uh, layer four to layer seven services. Um, that starts with load balancing or service uh, proxy, as we call it in a, in a container world, uh, but also application security, including SSL, uh, termination, uh, DDoS detection and mitigation, web application firewall, and also application visibility and monitoring. So all of these layer four to layer seven application services are built into uh, the same product. And unlike any of the solutions out in the market, this is a software only solution that works across all the use cases, including both the traditional load balancing use cases, as well as um, private cloud with OpenStack, public cloud, um, and container uh, use cases as we'll see with OpenShift as well as Kubernetes. Um, we have customers worldwide, uh, including some joint common customers. So we have customers that are using us in OpenStack environment with Red Hat. We have customers using us um, in, in OpenShift, customers such as uh, Deutsche Bank and Danske Bank, um, as well as other cust uh, they are these customers running in production today with Avi uh, and Red Hat OpenShift. Um, and also we have customers piloting us, customers such as Intuit and others uh, with the OpenShift environment. Um, and all of these customers also uh, use Ansible as the automation tool. So as far as the, the ecosystem is concerned, uh, we have customers with OpenStack, with Red Hat, with Ansible automation and OpenShift uh, for their container fabrics. We'll talk about more of the use cases as we go along. But um, the, let me give you a little bit more background on the problem that Avi is trying to solve in general. Uh, what our customers are trying to achieve across all the use cases whether they're running an on-prem or private cloud or public cloud or containers is going from the left side of this picture with a manual ticket-driven operation to a self-service, uh, fully automated experience with CI CD, with network automation, with application automation deployment, with uh, OpenShift, with Ansible, and so on. And um, the use cases might be different, but the underlying, uh, the reason, the underlying um, driving factor for these customers is automation. And that's why automation is uh, built in fundamentally into Avi solution. We'll, we'll talk about that in the next couple of slides. So what is the problem today 
uh, why does Avi Networks exist? Uh, why did we get started? And, and the problem that exists today is, if you look at any modern data center, you have racks and racks of servers. And these are standard x86 servers on which you deploy applications. Um, there is no snowflake here. All servers are x86 servers. You can deploy uh, your applications on uh, any servers. You can start with, let's say, 10 servers, and you can scale out to 15 or 20, or scale back to 5 or 6 uh, as the load increases or decreases. Uh, you manage them as a pool of capacities, a fluid, fluid capacity pool. You, you don't have any uh, specialized hardware for your applications. And that allows you to do automation. That allows you to have a, a telemetry that's built in that drives that automation. And, and um, it, it makes the entire management of the fabric much simpler. And that's how all the modern data centers are built. But if you look at any of the layer 4 to layer 7 services, and especially the traditional hardware load balancers, whether they're F5 or Citrix Netscalers or A10s, uh, they're built on proprietary hardware. Uh, they are an appliance-centric model. Even if you look at the virtual appliances, there are appliances, uh, which means you have to manage them as individual devices. There is lack of automation. REST APIs are an afterthought. Um, and uh, you can't basically automate as an elastic pool of capacity. That is the fundamental problem that Avi solves. So let's see how it solves it, and then we'll talk about how it works in an OpenShift environment. If you look under the hood, uh, of a traditional appliance-based load balancer, that it's a monolithic piece of software running on, on a proprietary hardware. Uh, in that software, there are two components, a management slash control plane, which handles the configuration, the policy, et cetera, and the data plane, which is actually doing the load balancing or other security services. The first innovation and disruption that Avi Networks did was applied um, uh, software-defined principles, where we separated the control plane from data plane. And so we have a concept of Avi controller, which is the centralized control plane that manages a distributed set of uh, data plane entities. We call them service engines. In OpenShift parlance, you can just say this is your OpenShift master and then your uh, individual OpenShift uh, open, uh, nodes. Right? Same concept as far as the, the, the separation of control and data plane goes. That's the first thing that we did. And what this allows you to do is manage your entire fabric, entire service proxy or load balancing fabric as one, because your uh, controller is your REST API endpoint. And the controller completely automates the underlying service engine uh, fabric. The second problem we wanted to solve was the heterogeneous um, compute environment, right? You might have applications running on a bare metal, on a virtualized environment, let's say with KVM on OpenStack. Or are you running in a containers with Docker containers running in Kubernetes or an OpenShift environment? Or are you running in a public cloud environment, whether it's Google Public Cloud, AWS, Azure, or anybody else? How do we have a same solution with operational consistency, um, feature consistency uh, that works across all of the above environment? Well, that's a problem Avi has solved as well. How? Because Avi is software. It can take a form factor of our server, by running Avi as a software on a bare metal server. It can be a, a, a VM running with KVM or ESXR. It can be a Docker container running with Kubernetes or OpenShift integration, as we show in the demo. Or it can run as a VM or a container in a public cloud instance. The same software that runs across the board. And the beauty of the, the, these two pieces of architecture is that this is managed from a centralized Avi controller. And the way Avi achieves, the Avi controller achieves that automation is through integration with the ecosystem. So Avi talks to OpenShift Master, it ta or it talks to Kubemaster, or it talks to Amazon APIs, or OpenStack APIs, um, to make, uh, to, to spin up these Docker instances, for example, or VM instances automatically based on demand. So the operational flow is that you communicate to the Avi controller through REST API, or Ansible playbook that's built on REST API, and say, I want to have load balancing services for these applications, or I'm deploying these applications, do everything. And then from then on, the Avi controller talks to appropriate orchestration engines, spins up the appropriate uh, proxy instances, scales them out as the traffic grows, or shrinks them as the traffic shrinks, manage the high availability, manage the placement of all that, fully automated um, layer 4 to layer 7 services. And the last piece of the last secret ingredient of the architecture is the built-in visibility in analytics. So these service engines, which are your proxies, are running, are sitting in line with your traffic, right? They're intercepting the TCP, DHCP traffic. 
And as part of the, the proxying functionality, it's um, uh, collecting hundreds of logs and metrics every minute, pushing it up to the AVI controller, and the AVI controller runs the big data analytics engine. And not only to present a nice dashboard for, for you to see what's going on from performance uh, uh, and visibility point of view, but the controller uses that information in a closed loop fashion to make automated policy-based changes on the underlying infrastructure. So for example, if it sees the traffic growing, it can talk to the OpenShift um, APIs and, and auto scale your infrastructure or auto scale out or scale in depending on the policies. So it's a fully elastic automated services fabric. And it's a full feature load balancer, a full feature fabric. So if you want to, if you, the questions that comes to your mind is, well, does it have the, the features that my F5s or Citrix have? Yes. Uh, it's not an open source HA proxy or a coop proxy like uh, basic load balancer. It's a full enterprise grade with L7, L4, L7, caching compression, content switching, auto scaling, global server load balancing, SSL, DDoS, WAF, you name it, it's an enterprise grade solution. Think of Avi as the best of an enterprise grade a proxy or load balancing solution married with the elasticity of your, of your coop proxy or, or HA proxy or Nginx um, that's built in with integration into your OpenShift environment. Plus, the application visibility, the log analytics, the security the analytics, the built-in multi-tenancy, built-in service discovery, um, centralized management are in addition to the, the features that we talked about. And we'll talk more about uh, this as we go through the demo. Um, uh, but a common question that gets asked is, well, this is software. What about performance? Surely the hardware is required to get high performance. Well, that's a myth that the hardware vendors have propagated. That's absolutely not the case. Here is two data points. Um, first, you can have um, one gig of encrypted sustained throughput or five gig of total unencrypted throughput, 2,500 uh, uh, SSL transactions per second with perfect forward secrecy in a single vCPU core um, uh, as a proxy. And then you, this Lego block of your proxy, the service engine can be one core, two core, or a full bare metal server, and that gets you more than what your hardware appliances give you in that form factor. The second part, it's horizontal scale out. With these Lego blocks, you can build lots of service engines in a scale out fashion, centrally managed by a big controller. It can reach millions of SSL TPS, terabits of throughput on commodity x86 hardware. And as a proof point, one of our customers' largest one of the largest e-commerce and payment companies uh, did an experiment where in a Google public cloud, they scaled out with Avi a single application, single VIP to 1 million SSL TPS, zero to 1 million in eight minutes, running on commodity uh, Google uh, x86 instances. You cannot even do that in hardware appliance. So performance is a non-issue. It actually outperforms any hardware load balancers. All right, uh, last slide on the use cases, and then we switch over to the OpenShift specific um, uh, uh, um, integration. So Avi works across your traditional load balancer refresh use cases, where you work on a bare metal or, or a VM, uh, taking, uh, replacing hardware load balancers, saving uh, over half the cost to our customers. Our private cloud use cases with OpenStack, uh, um, uh, with Ansible automation, or a public cloud, or an SVN environment, or the case in point today is container and uh, pass solutions. Okay, so let's switch gears here. And uh, let's, by the way, we have a common red customers with Red Hat on all of the above use cases here. Um, let's switch gears into how does it work in OpenShift? How does this architecture that we just talked about for the last 10 minutes fit into um, an OpenShift uh, architecture? So let's start with the problem statement first, right? So as the, um, as the uh, application architectures have evolved from a monolithic application to distributed microservices-based application, uh, you have a problem. You can use your traditional appliances for north-south, or as OpenShift calls it, routes um, uh, uh, layer, right? Where you can deploy your SSL offload and load balancing for your north-south application. But what about east-west? Um, because your microservices-based uh, architecture, there's a lot of east west traffic that goes on. And your traditional appliances don't work because uh, it's an appliance, even it's a virtual appliance. 
So um, the common solution is a coop proxy, for example, in an open shift environment. Uh, there are challenges with that, and we'll talk about that in a minute. What Avi has done is, if you look at the infrastructure stack of a container services fabric, you have your server layer, physical or virtual, doesn't matter. You have your network layer, with or without SDN, and then you have your L4 to L7 layer. And on top of that, you have the Kubernetes and OpenShift uh, for the scheduling and the resource management. Avi Networks fits, fills in the gap that's in the middle. When you are running on-prem or in public cloud, doesn't matter, but from service discovery to service proxy to uh, application uh, visibility and performance monitoring to uh, micro-segmentation at the application level and uh, security at L7 to DDoS to SLA-based auto-scaling by integrating with Kubernetes or OpenShift. That's the gap that Avi provides, an enterprise-grade layer 4 to layer 7 um, services solution. And we'll go into now, over the next 10 minutes before the demo, we'll go into the detailed architecture. So um, what is the before and after, right? So if you look at the before, if you look at either a traditional hardware-based solutions or if you look at uh, a combination with an open source solutions, what are the challenges? First of all, you need multiple tools. Uh, for your route or for the north-south load balancer, typically use an HA proxy front-end by the hardware load balancer for SSL offload. Right? That's a common example. Um, there are challenges with that. HA proxy itself is not HA. You need a separate uh, a daemon to manage, monitor its, uh, it, its uh, heartbeats. Uh, it doesn't have a, a enterprise grade features. It's a very basic load balancer. And then when you combine that with the hardware load balancer, it's too expensive and complex. And then you need separate tools for um, your east-west, typically use Coop proxy. Coop proxy itself is a probabilistic load balancer. It doesn't do L7, doesn't even do east-west SSL. And then if you combine that with a separate service discovery solution for DNS, uh, centralized management, uh, hardware load balance for global server load balancing, these multiple tools add professional complexity uh, and higher cost. How does Avi solve this problem? Avi has one solution that does all of the above. It does service discovery, service uh, proxy, so local and global load balancing, application maps, application performance monitoring, security, micro-segmentation, auto-scaling. And so architecture-wise, how does it work? So um, we, we saw earlier in the architecture slide, we have a centralized controller and a distributed data plane, the service engine. So the way it looks like is the, that is the Avi controller that is deployed typically as a container, typically on the OpenShift master, but it can be outside. And Avi service engines, one pod per your OpenShift node. So Avi service engine runs as a container in a pod on each of your OpenShift nodes. Okay, so let's go through uh, the light in the life of, so from day zero to day one uh, to ongoing, and then we go into the demo to show you how this works, right? So um, I'm going to walk you through the steps of how the integration works and how the flow works and to show you that exactly in the live demo. Day zero, the way it works is on um, uh, step one, uh, on AV controller, you configure the OpenShift uh, credentials. So you have deployed AV controller and you, as a container, um, and you, uh, you give it access to the OpenShift master. That's it. That's the only config you ever have to do on Avi. From then on, Avi controller talks to OpenShift master, uh, figures out how many OpenShift nodes are running in the environment, and automatically uh, brings up Avi service engines as Docker containers or pods uh, in each of the nodes. Um, then what we're going to show you is when you create a deployment, let's say app one in OpenShift, Avi automatically listens to the notifications and pulls configuration from OpenShift masters, automatically creates these uh, uh, corresponding services, creates a VIP, creates a DNS record, fully automated. Okay, so on day zero, you configure the ma uh, controller with the master credentials, and from then on, as you do deployments, Avi takes care of everything. Um, if you're GSLB, same thing, you just uh, do it, uh, uh, you do it, uh, oops, sorry about that. Uh, you do it uh, on uh, each of the data centers, and then you do GSLB configuration. So again, you do the deployment app one in data center one and data center two. Avi automatically creates the corresponding local VIPs. Avi automatically creates 
the uh, global service uh, for GSLB covering both the WIPs. Uh, we automatically syncs that to all the followers and starts health monitoring the local WIPs. So even for GSLB, uh, zero touch. So how does the traffic flow work? So now that the um, uh, now that the uh, the deployment has been done and uh, and your services have been created, let's look at the traffic flow. How does AVI provide the set of service discovery, service proxy uh, uh, capabilities? So let's say an external user, let's talk about North-South traffic management. So this is the route uh, part of it. Um, it's a customer comes in from ex outside, looks for app1.os.acme.com, um, recursively through the DNS, it comes through the DNS that AVI is running, uh, and it, uh, first of all, does the GSLB resolution because you're running in two data centers. Um, the GSLB returns a local VIP, uh, and then the user performs the GET on that local uh, IP address, and then AVI automatically handles that as a service engine, as a proxy, TCP, HTTP, SSL proxy, figures out where the right pod is, um, that should handle this uh, specific request and follows up on, the, uh, um, uh, and, and basically does a load balancing. It's a fully stateful load balancer. Uh, let's talk about east-west traffic management. So what happens when an internal service is trying to reach another service for um, um, uh, uh, through, through, uh, through DNS? So similarly, Avi is going to perform, the, not the Avi, the service is going to perform a DNS query for uh, that east-west uh, uh, application uh, recursively hits the GSLB, returns the web, uh, and uh, east-west traffic also is managed the same way. So basically, it's a client-side proxy. So the way it works locally is that the the pod that is doing the request is the traffic is intercepted by the local proxy that's running on AVI uh, service engine, and the service engine then decides who the corresponding uh, uh, best pod is to respond. So because we have um, a service engine running on every pod, this is the client-side proxy, just like co-proxy. Our service engine basically replaces co-proxy. So every time the request is sent out from the, from the requesting pod that's intercepted by the local uh, 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 service engine proxy, and then it's load balanced in a stateful fashion. So unlike co-proxy, which is a, a, a probabilistic packet distributor, uh, in this case, RV is a fully stateful uh, proxy, and it, it does the health checks, and it makes sure that the load is evenly distributed. It can handle SSL offload. It can do all L7 policies and rules like URL rewriting, uh, rate limiting, uh, URL-based redirects. Everything that you expect in an enterprise-grade load balancer is also available for your east-west traffic. Um, this also allows you to then go beyond just basic uh, proxy services and integrate with your CI, CD, and or your blue-green deployment. Let's say you're deploying applications version two, um, and you want to do a policy-based switchover from a blue version to a green version, or version one to version two. Well, you, all you have to do is you create, through annotations, you create policies on AVI, and um, as what AVI can do is you can configure, say, send 10% of the traffic first to the new version, and if everything all, uh, looks good, then automatically start sending everything to the new version. If it doesn't look good, is a fallback to the blue version. So you can do that programmatically uh, based on policies through, through, through this solution and non-disruptively. So the existing connections are allowed to drain the new connections, switch over to the new version. Um, another common use case that we have with this is um, a, a security capability where let's say you have an external service, whether it's a database service or active directory service that your internal services wants to access. However, you want to gate that only certain services, only certain internal applications can access those external service, and you want, to, uh, um, you, want, you want to force that policy. And let's say you have a firewall in the middle um, that's uh, also controlling the access to that shared resource. Well, what you can do with AVI is that uh, create this um, uh, external pod, uh, we call AVI pod, that what that does is, uh, through policies, it says only blue service is allowed to access the external resource. And we also do a NAT source NATing to a, to, a, uh, to a single IP address. So in the firewall, you have to open up a single IP. You don't have to open up multiple IP addresses. And so it does two things. 
It allows you to simplify a firewall configuration at the same time. It allows you to uh, control which service, in this case a blue service, can access the external resource and the red service cannot. All right, so with that, let me pause here, hand the control over to Bushin, uh, where we'll do a, a, a detailed demo uh, about everything that we just talked about step by step, starting from scratch, uh, where you have an OpenShift cluster and AVI controller deployed, and we'll spin up AVI service engines, we'll create service, uh, deployments, uh, and we should run some traffic. Uh, Bushin, over to you. Thank you, Ashish. Uh, let me start sharing out here. Okay, so what we uh, aim to do in this uh, demo is create a virtual service, like you see. Uh, okay. Let me, you see it now? Okay, yes. Uh, no. Give it a second. I'm still trying to share your screen. I think it's a bit slow. And let's see what we got. You're sharing the screen. I can see that you're sharing the screen, but you need to click into your browser. Yeah. There you go. Okay. That works. Uh, okay. So this is what we uh, aim to do in this demo uh, today. Uh, we are going to uh, deploy services on uh, OpenShift, and this is what it's going to look like. We have a virtual service, which corresponds to a service in OpenShift, which has the VIP on it, which is placed on one of the service engines running uh, on the uh, on one of the cl uh, cluster nodes. Uh, this service uh, virtual service can have one or multiple pool members, and each pool can have multiple uh, backend pods. So let's start with our uh, clean setup. Uh, as you see out here, uh, we have a OpenShift uh, system with multiple projects on it, and uh, AVI controller which is uh, right now, we don't have anything on it. Uh, it's completely clean setup, no applications, no virtual services, nothing. And I also have a dashboard to uh, run some REST APIs to either the OpenShift master or AV controller to provision some um, services quickly. So let's start with the first uh, day zero configuration that is setting up the OpenShift uh, <laughs> cloud. And let's go back and check out our infrastructure. So as you see earlier, we didn't have, uh, this was none, but now we have configured the OpenShift cloud out here. So uh, behind the scenes, what it does is uh, configure the master node IP and uh, authentication token, uh, set the SC deployment policies, uh, uh, telling from where to get the image, how to deploy, where to deploy. And uh, uh, on the application side, it also configures the IPAM and DNS profile. So for this demo purpose, we are using our uh, internal IPAM and uh, DNS for both east, west, and north, south uh, virtual services. Uh, in uh, addition to this, uh, uh, we also maps all the projects which are there on OpenShift as tenants, which you can see out here in the tenant view. Uh, so for each project on OpenShift, we map it to a uh, tenant on uh, AVI. So let's be on uh, admin tenant for now. And the next step is to configure the DNS virtual service, which will be uh, responding to all the DNS queries for all the applications running uh, that AVI will handle. So uh, as, uh, let's go back to application and see that uh, the virtual service is already up and running. Uh, if you go to infrastructure, uh, uh, we see that the service engines are also up. Uh, the OpenShift cluster has four nodes, one master and three uh, uh, three minutes uh, node. Uh, and AVI controller goes and deploys a service engine on each node. Uh, AVI controller also has the intelligence to disable the service engine on nodes which are uh, not scheduled for pods. For example, the master node out here is uh, disabled, has the service engine disabled. Uh, and if you go back to the DNS virtual service, you, uh, we see that we are, it's listening on one of the uh, IPs for the north south uh, uh, in the north south network, and it will start uh, serving for all the FTDNs of different uh, services on uh, on the OpenShift. 
right so let's go to admin project right now as you see there are no uh, applications running so let's go and start some applications on OpenShift side, so when I click that button on the uh, demo controller page, uh, what it did was uh, it ran a REST API uh, to OpenShift master on uh, deploying the applications uh, and deployment configs, uh, which in turn deployed the application pods, as you see. And as these uh, applications come up, uh, we automatically sync those uh, and pr uh, provisions corresponding virtual services uh, automatically. Uh, and places them on all of those uh, service engines you saw, saw earlier. So let's wait for the applications to come up. All right, looks like uh, all of them are already up and green. Uh, as you see out here, uh, all of the applications are uh, have IP in the 172 subnet, that's the east-west subnet, except for photo, which is our north-south uh, facing uh, service, we, uh, it has an IP in the north-south subnet. Um, all this uh, uh, happens automatically uh, using our internal IPAM. Uh, the way uh, uh, we uh, provisions these virtual services is through annotations on the service which we uh, which you configure on OpenShift. So if you go to one of the services and see the uh, annotations for uh, for that service. Uh, only, the only thing that the app developer has to do is uh, provide a label called a proxy, and uh, in the value of that label, uh, specify what type of load balancing it requires. Uh, is it a regular HTTP or HTTPS or L4 service? What kind of uh, uh, load balancing algorithm it requires? Is it a, a round robin or least connections or, or any other option which we have? And uh, AVI automatically reads those uh, labels or annotations and provisions corresponding WIPs. So it's uh, zero touch on AVI side. Uh, so another view which we have out here is called a map view. So let's go for it and let's focus on the photo.com app, which is our uh, north south facing app, and start some traffic uh, to it. So since you sit in line with the traffic, uh, we know what application is talking to what other application. And as you see out here in a while, uh, we uh, monitor the traffic coming into your uh, application, uh, north-south application, and we also trace it uh, back to all other applications as it flows through uh, your application stack. For example, uh, the client is uh, accessing photo, and photo in turn is uh, accessing other applications uh, over east-west web. Uh, that like shopping cart inventory and checkout. Uh, what this uh, enables us to do is, uh, okay, let's uh, dig into uh, one of the applications and see uh, how it can help uh, with the security of the um, virtual of uh, the virtual services or services uh, in this case. Um, we see that uh, this application is uh, getting traffic from three other virtual services, and AVI automatically populates those virtual services into the whitelist. Uh, from this day onwards, if you just uh, save this uh, configuration uh, and secure this VS, uh, no other application will be able to talk to this. So to uh, demonstrate this uh, in real time, let's just uh, move one of the application out of the whitelist and uh, in some time, we will see that the application which we moved, uh, the arrow will turn red, which indicating that all the traffic from that application uh, is, has been blocked. Uh, while the, okay, so, uh, as you see right now. In addition to this, along the edges connecting the uh, different applications, we can also see various metrics like throughput, uh, number of complete requests, uh, total request errors, latency, et cetera. Uh, the user can also see the same things uh, in a graphical manner uh, on the analytics page for each and every virtual service. I'll give it some time to load. So yep, you can see end-to-end um, -end timing, throughput, open connections, number of connections, requests, uh, and all other uh, metrics out here. Also, under logs, you can see uh, uh, each and every uh, request coming into the application. For example, out here it says what uh, client app is trying to reach this app, what URL it is uh, uh, hitting, 
uh, and if you want to dig even deeper, you can expand one of those uh, requests and see uh, in detail what uh, pod IP uh, sender request, which uh, load balancer handled it, and which backend uh, pool member uh, it went to, uh, along with uh, um, hundreds of other met uh, metrics out here. Uh, if we uh, right on this one is uh, just a simple HTTP VS, but if you move to uh, our photo.com, which is our north south, I have configured it as a, a secure HTTP or HTTPS VS. So on this, we can also see uh, the security uh, analytics uh, for this uh, virtual service, uh, we, uh, where we can see uh, how much percentage of traffic is uh, uh, RSA or uh, uh, EC. Uh, you can also see uh, right now we don't have any attacks happening on this service, but if uh, any attacks happen, we can also see the attack counts out here. Uh, uh, apart from that, we have other graphs showing that uh, a percentage of traffic are using different TLS versions, uh, 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, 1 1 etc. Uh, again, transactions per second, uh, number of key exchanges happening, uh, different types of certificates the clients are using. Um, yeah, etc. Um, I, yep. I guess so from the demo point of view, uh, uh, that was all. I'll uh, hand the uh, baton back to Ashish. Yeah, uh, Bushan. One more thing, yep. if you can show that, if you can uh, show in a north-south whip on other demo whip that we have, where yeah, sure. the type of uh, the end-to-end -end timing, the type of geography, call information. Uh, the the type of top URIs, 404s, etc. So maybe you can spend five minutes or so on um, some of the other things that we can do. Right sure. There. So moving back to the what we saw initially at the beginning of the demo, uh, for the, this demo we we have much richer traffic to show. Uh, so as you can see uh, on the end-to-end -end timing side, we can show you a summary of uh, what the client response uh, time looked like, how the server re uh, response time looks like. Was the data transfer time? Was how fast is the application responding? And it's not just uh, for a given uh, current time, but you can view it across multiple time windows. Like you see out here, we are viewing for the past six hours, and you see uh, between 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. we saw a certain surge in the end-to-end -end timing. We, um, some of our uh, clients must have seen the application slow down. In this case, uh, usually the blame goes to the networking team, uh, but uh, using Avis UI, you can uh, clearly see that uh, the, uh, there is no change, uh, relatively no change on the client RTT side, but the app response changed drastically. So maybe uh, it's the, uh, it's surely the application which is uh, behaving a bit uh, weirdly, uh, causing the uh, application to slow, uh, client experience to slow down. Um, in addition to this, uh, uh, we also uh, we can like I said we can see uh, each and every request coming in and out of your application. Uh, we classify those requests uh, into two types: significant and non-significant logs. The significant ones are the one which uh, either end up in 400 or in some kind of error, and uh, or take a really long time. Basically, something which needs uh, which can help debug uh, problems. Uh, Non-significant ones are the one which uh, breeze through uh, really um, easy, uh, with uh, no errors at all, like a regular 200 requests. So uh, if we open one of these requests, we can see a lot more data about wh where the actual uh, client uh, is located, what kind of ma OS is it using, uh, what uh, kind of device is it using, what uh, another uh, L7 security uh, um, metrics like what TLS version, what certificate type is, is using. Uh, and again, we can see the client, uh, from what client IP to which, uh, which service engine uh, handled the traffic on what port. And also on the backend side, which web server handled the, uh, handled the request. Uh, we can uh, also, uh, if, uh, if you want, you can also dig down even deeper and see each and every header on the request. Uh, all these logs are uh, uh, captured real time, but uh, can be uh, either enabled or disabled to uh, whenever required. Um, uh, how this thing helps is, uh, for example, out here, uh, uh, you see, uh, see that if you go to end-to-end -end timing, you see that uh, some most of the uh, clients uh, got 
serviced between uh, with a relatively low uh, amount of latency, but some of them uh, are seeing uh, about a second of delay uh, for the response. If you just click on this, uh, we uh, automatically filter out all the requests uh, which ended up uh, getting more than uh, 800 milliseconds of delay. Uh, if you uh, see that mo most of these uh, have relatively high client RTT times. So if we sort this out uh, based on sift this out based on location, we see that 99% of this traffic is coming from India. So maybe the van link is the culprit out here. So within seconds, we are able to quickly pinpoint uh, where the problem is. Uh, this was from the networking point of view, but uh, even for the application uh, administrator, uh, he can just, uh, if he sees a lot of uh, 404 errors on this uh, on his application, he can just click on 404 uh, and see all the all the logs that ended up in 404. And then he can sift this uh, um, this information based on server IP addresses, and he knows which server is uh, the application uh, erroring out on. So even uh, even debugging the application problems is uh, really easy using uh, uh, when you use Avi. Uh, on the security side, like I was uh, talking earlier, we can show different. Uh, different uh, how, uh, percentages of uh, client using different types of uh, TLS versions, different types of uh, certificates. Uh, we also give you a, a real-time score of how your application is performing based on your uh, security. Uh, for example, out here we are using self-signed certificates, so it uh, so, uh, so it's uh, uh, changing the health of the virtual service. Um, I guess uh, uh, that was all. Uh, back to you, Ashish. For thank you, Bhushan. Uh, thank you very much for a detailed demo. Hope uh, that gave you a glimpse of what Avi can do uh, today. And 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 it has more things that uh, we can we can show you um, if you are interested in a one-on-one one-on-one um, one -on -one environment, including doing things like auto scaling capabilities, um, etc. So let us um, um, wrap up. Uh, and then we can take a Q&A. Um, uh, but let me summarize first what we saw earlier today uh, in the presentation. So what you saw was a fully uh, distributed enterprise-grade load balancer that takes care of both your routes for north-south traffic and services for the east-west traffic as well as GSLB. It's a single solution that takes care of all of the above uh, capabilities including integrated IPAM and DNS for service discovery, um, fully automated service proxy with service creation, application map and analytics and troubleshooting capabilities that you saw. And what this allows you to do is to have a full, um, a, a much simpler uh, experience with a very few moving parts of the same RV solution that does all of the above. You don't need a separate hardware load balancer for GSLB or for SSL and a software HA proxy or Coop proxy for East-West, uh, which again, doesn't give you anywhere close to what RV offers. And that results in significant CapEx and OpEx reduction given the simplification as well as elimination of hardware load balancers. Uh, and lower resource consumption. There was a question on the chat that what's the footprint? The footprint is as small as one vCPU and one to two gig of memory. Um, and the beauty is that it works in any environment. It works on-prem, it works in public cloud, uh, it works uh, with OpenShift, uh, it works with Kubernetes, um, it works in AWS, Azure, GCP, et cetera. And finally, the thing that we didn't have uh, time to cover today, but I'll just uh, plug in here is a Ansible automation. So um, if you were to go to our um, if you were to go to our Ansible um, uh, repo in GitHub, what you'll notice is that there is um, we have a full Ansible modules as you can see here for day zero deployment for um, so for Avi controller deployment for Avi service engine deployment for web provisioning in a non-OpenShift environment as well because OpenShift as you saw everything was automated but in any other environment we have a full Ansible playbook and in fact. Uh, just today, um, Red Hat and Avi did an Ansible Fest in London, uh, where one of our Ansible architects, along with the Red Hat uh, engineer, presented the automation that Avi provides. So check out our GitHub repo as well. And if you're interested uh, in uh, beyond OpenShift, even in our uh, OpenStack solution, uh, reach out to us because we have joined customers using Avi in OpenStack 
uh, with Red Hat. So with that, um, I'll leave you here uh, with these resources and we'll take questions. So if you have any questions, reach out to me at ashish at avinetworks.com or Edward Sharp, uh, who's in our business development uh, department. And then um, um, let's take some questions. So um, uh, the question is, is it possible to test Avi on OpenShift Origin? Um, the answer is yes. Um, and Bushan, do you want to spend any, spend any uh, have any color on that? Uh, it, yeah, it works. Um exactly the same both on the enterprise version as well as on the OpenShift version, open source version. Thank you. There's very, very little difference between the um, OCP and Origin in terms of deploying um, any, pretty much anything here. So um, this has been pretty, I think my mind has been blown because I've been seeing, looking at Kube Proxy and this just really um, blows uh, Kube Proxy out of the water, uh, and I'm, I'm very uh, appreciative of you guys spending the time uh, giving us this demo and the insights into what we can do with Avi Networks is offering. And I, you know, I really I can see now why you have so many joint customers with us because this is something that I, I I'm actually curious to, to know if the OpenShift Online or the dedicated folks at OpenShift are, have been using this in the background. Um, unbeknownst to me, so I'm going to have to reach out to them and, and that team, because this just seems like um, something that's very, not I wouldn't say completely lightweight, but the, the benefits you get from running it, it are just mind-blowing as opposed to just simple load balancing um, that I've uh, played with earlier. But yeah, this has been a very great presentation. So um, folks, if you have questions, please do reach out to the team here, and we will uh, looking to see if there's any other questions online in the chat. I think everything got answered in the chat. Um, from a performance standpoint, it looks like this is really not um, anything with any serious overhead. So I, I definitely think I'd suggest you give it a try and give them a call. Um, and I would love to talk um, further maybe with um, some of your customers to get them to tell their their stories as well because I think um, it's great with the demo sets but also to get something um, at scale would be really wonderful so maybe we can get absolutely done yeah people. absolutely yes thank Thanks. you thank you for the opportunity yeah this is this was great so um, everybody will be back on next week again we have a couple of um, events coming up soon um, the the first big event will be that uh, Cube 1.7 is coming out. So we'll have a number of um, talks coming up on that. We're gonna continue our theme this month with monitoring um, of all ilks. So there'll be more monitoring talks. And um, they'll post this and the slide deck. So if, if you guys can send me a PDF version of the slide deck, we'll post this video and the slides up on um, the OpenShift blog um, within two days, it should be up there and running. So um, if you're listening to this uh, virtually later on, please do reach out um, and join the mailing list or join our Slack channel. Um, you can find us on commons.openshift.org. And um, really a great presentation from Avi today. Um, my mind is a little blown. There's a lot of details there. And I think this is this is something that you know, we look to for partners to provide. Um, and this is just really outstanding work. So thanks, guys. And we'll talk to you all soon. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Appreciate it.